This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, we have the latest on the proposed merger between three local fire departments. Welcome to Tuesday's FYI on SSPTV. I'm Ken Cara. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with a travel warning. AAA's Mid-Atlantic Region announced today that the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, is telling airlines to suspend flights to Tel Aviv, Israel for 24 hours due to the unrest there. AAA travel agents have been advised to secure new flights for travelers who may need to change their plans. Most airplanes are allowing, or most airlines are allowing affected travelers to change their flights without extra fees. On Monday, the State Department issued the following statement. The Department of State recommends that U.S. citizens consider the deferral of non-essential travel to Israel and the West Bank and reaffirms the long-standing strong warning to U.S. citizens against any travel to the Gaza Strip. Three local fire companies are moving closer and closer to merging. J.J. Ravinskis has more details. The Tresco, McAdoo and Keystone Fire Company held a town meeting in Tresco on Monday night to discuss a possible merger of the three fire companies. The merger is being thought of as a way to be cost efficient and better serve the people of the area. A committee comprised of members of all three fire companies and run by McAdoo Fire Chief Robert Leshko has been working towards the smooth and efficient completion of the merger. So right now, uh, McAdoo and, and Keystone have voted 100%. The members of Tresco Fire Company have voted uh, to put in their building, their fire apparatus, um, and they're presently uh, working to uh, draw up what piece of that building uh, will be coming into the merger. Uh, August 8, 19th, we will be meeting with our attorney to uh, move forward with our merger resolution agreements, and we hope to have everything completed by uh, February 1st of uh, 2015. The merger would result in the three companies packaging together all of their resources, along with any debt they may have. If the merger is to go as scheduled, the fire companies plan to change the name to Southside Emergency Services and move into a new building that would house the 60 firefighters and emergency workers under one roof. Some concerns regarding the location of the possible new house was a heated topic for certain residents. And I'm all in favor of this merger, except I do not want them to put their building at St. Michael's Park. For one thing, there's a playground there and lots of children use the playground. And I think it would be hazardous to the children with fire engines going up and down and ambulances going down and police cars going up and down. I think the industrial center or the industrial park would be a better place for this building. The merger is currently an ongoing process with many questions and uncertainties. Boleshko is available to answer questions and concerns anyone may have. If anybody has any questions uh, in regards to what's going on with the merger or if they would like to become a member of any of the companies, they could contact me at the McAdoo Fire Company, uh, which is 570-929-2042 and leave a message and I will return your call as soon as I'm available. Reporting for FYI, I'm JJ Ravinskis. Thanks, JJ. In other news, a 52-year-old man was assaulted and robbed last night in Hazleton. It happened in the area of West 2nd Street and Emerald Court around 1140 last night. According to police, 18-year-old Juan Carlos Tejeda Colon made two juvenile males or, and two juvenile males assaulted and robbed the man. One of the juveniles was transported to Northampton Community Juvenile Detention Center and Tejada Colon was taken to the Luzerne County Prison as a result of the investigation. No word on the extent of injuries to the victim as a result of that assault. A truck pulled down wires along Route 93 in West Hazleton, causing traffic lights to go dark and about 1,700 PPL Electric Utilities customers in the borough and Hazel Township to lose power Tuesday morning. Traffic lights from Susquehanna Avenue to Deer Run Road, the southernmost entrance to Valmont Industrial Park, were out after the 10 a.m. incident near Hazleton, near Hazleton Parking in the borough, the signals were back on around 11.30 a.m. PPL crews responded and fire police were on the scene. If you travel along South Church Street near Buttonwood Street in Hazleton, expect some heavy traffic. Our media partner, The Standard Speaker, reports that truck traffic will be up in that area for the next week or two as dump trucks bring in fill and soil to the mine reclamation site near there. The material is being used by Hazleton Creek Properties. For in-depth information on the project and the latest from Hazleton Creek Properties, grab today's paper or log on to standardspeaker.com to read Sam Galski's story. 
In an effort to better inform the community about foster care programs and the adoption process, State Representative Tara Tuhill will host a special event tomorrow, and you're invited. FYI's Janine Mazurkevich sat down with Representative Tuhill to talk about the forum. You do have people that are out there that are trying to have children and cannot. Uh, there are babies out there right now in this area and they need love and they need a home. Uh, so we're hoping that um, you'll come out to our event that we're having on the 23rd of July. Uh, it's going to be at the HIP Center and, and that we'll be able to have the different government agencies there to say, here's the foster care program, here's the adoption program. Mm -hmm. Just have information, and it's a mixer, so it'll be lighthearted. You could stop in for a little bit and go. This special information session entitled Raising Foster Care and Adoption Awareness Event will be a casual mixture featuring food, music, and various government agencies. To explain the process, it takes place tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. in the cafeteria of the Hazleton One Community Center at 225 East 4th Street in Hazleton. And now information from the desk of the Freeland Borough. Council is exploring options for its recycling program. The current waste collection contract does not allow curbside pickup for recyclables. The borough is looking to reinstate it on a limited basis. Anyone in need of curbside recycling pickup can call 636-1980 and leave your name, address and phone number. Council plans to discuss the matter at future meetings. Standardspeaker.com is your source for breaking local news and sports information. Go there after FYI and click around and check out the latest headlines and their in-depth coverage of local issues. Hey everyone, stay tuned for sports because we're going to talk with a local woman who hit a hole-in-one and who won a trip because of that. Plus, we'll stop by the Babe Ruth 13 to 15-year-old state tournament. And right after this break, Janine joins us once again for this week's installment of Care for Kids. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Welcome back to FYI. We are in your community today at Eagle Rock Resort, and every Tuesday we talk about adoption and the foster care programs here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Today we're focusing on the independent living portion of that. And Brianna is nice enough to join us. She's 16 years old, but way mature beyond her years. So Brianna, thanks for joining us here on FYI. No problem. So tell us about your story. My story, all right. Well, I was in foster care since I was, let's say, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I got taken off my parents. And I was in and out of foster care homes because a lot were judgmental or favoritism or just didn't work out. Okay. So then I moved in independent living finally and they helped me out a lot. Now I'm getting, I'm about to graduate this coming year in school, in high school diploma. I'm going to... You're like the best behaved, right? Yeah. And I, why is that? You have, a, you have a job, you're 16, you work in what, 30 hours a week? Yeah, Wendy's. I go to school. I got A's and B's this year. Mm -hmm. And what are some of your goals that you have for yourself? Well, I want to go to. I want to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. I want a high school diploma. I don't want a GED. Okay. And after that, I'm going to go to LCC C for two years to get all my like general courses. General courses out of the way, and then after that, I'm just going to go to a bigger college, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to figure out what I want to be then because I don't know now good. what I want to do for the rest of my life. At 16, you know that? That's really good. You have a good head <laughs> on your shoulders. So you're looking for someone not to adopt or to foster, but to be there. Everyone needs that someone, maybe a mentor. Yeah. Like, I just want, like, life gets hard. Mm -hmm. It does, even for, like, adults. I know mm -hmm. that. So I just want someone there. Like, I can, like, help me out once in a while. Like, just to be there, be friends. Not like, not really a parent figure, but like a, fr like a best friend. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I want. I want a connection with a family like that. Good. Well, hopefully we'll find you one here on the show. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that you joined us, but you definitely are headed in the right direction. And I wish you luck with 
getting your high school degree. Thank you. Graduating from high school yes. and then on to LCCC and then who knows what the future holds for you, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us every week. We're talking with young adults and children here throughout Luzerne County and Northeastern Pennsylvania about adoption, fostering, and independent living. If you're interested in any of these services, please contact Luzerne County Children and Youth. We'll see you next week right here on FYI. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. What a beautiful day it was in 1943 when coal was king and baseball ruled the airwaves. I don't know, I was a history miner, but honestly I don't know what I'm talking about. But the good folks at Eckley Miners Village do, and they will be talking about their 1940s weekend in the coming days right here on FYI. This shot is actually from present day at Eckley, believe it or not. Here's your weather forecast for 2014 from the National Weather Service tonight. Partly cloudy, the low will be 66 on the extended forecast. Showers and thunderstorms are likely on Wednesday. The high will be 83 degrees. Wednesday night, scattered showers and thunderstorms before 2 a.m. The low will be 62 degrees. On Thursday, there's a 20% chance for isolated showers and thunderstorms. The high is 76. Thursday night will get down to 54. Friday is a sunny day, the high at 76, and Friday night will drop to 56 for your low. On Saturday, another nice day, the high of 79, and Saturday night will go down to 61 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat including our ice cream and yogurt or some hot food including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. Today we're pleased to welcome two very good friends of ours here to SSP TV. To my immediate right is Monsignor Myron Grabowski, who is the pastor of St. Michael's Ukrainian Church in Shenandoah. And to my left is Reverend Mark Fezniak from St. Nicholas Ukrainian Catholic Church and School in Minersville. And they're here to talk about a wonderful event taking place this Sunday, and that is the annual Ukrainian Seminary Day. Father Mark, I'm going to start with you. How long has Ukrainian Seminary Day been taking place? It has been taking place for 80 years. It was first started by local clergy from the Shemokin Deanery at that time, and it used to take place at um, Barnesville um, at Lakewood Park. And um, when the park closed in 1984, um, the clergy in the area decided to have it at the Picnic Grove in St. Nicholas outside of Minersville in Primrose. And um, since that time, um, in 1984, we've raised over $693,000 for St. Joseph Ott Seminary in Washington, D.C. That is a lot of money and for a very worthy cause. And this is a wonderful event that's taking place this Sunday with uh, mass, but there's going to be many festivities and entertainment. Monsignor, there's been a lot of planning because there's a lot going on. Yes, there's a lot of planning. We get together sometime after Easter, and we have about four or five meetings to discuss this beautiful event. And this year, in fact, it's going to be really a some drastic, beautiful changes. Uh, you're going to come there, and it's going to have a little theme. Uh, I don't want to discuss the theme because I want it to be a surprise for everyone to see. And I think people are going to be very surprised of uh, those who are our re regular individuals who come. As you know, we every year, the Archbishop Stefan Soroka, our Archbishop in Philadelphia, will be here, and he'll be the main celebrant of the Divine Liturgy, along with the other priests from the deanery and other special priests that come in for this special event. We'll also be having uh, the this, this responses of the Divine Liturgy be uh, all the people together, and then afterwards we'll have all the good food available for you. We'll have our, our delicious pierogies, hal halupshi, Holupki, uh, Holushki, we have games for the children, it's, and we'll have a clown this year walking around past and making, uh, touching each of the children with balloons and special other events. And we also have Casca dancers, we have uh, the choir, uh, uh, junior choir from McAdoo, Our Lady pa uh, Patronage of Mary Parish. We also have um, the children from St. Nicholas School giving a little concert. We have vendors that come in with ethnic and other beautiful items for sale. 
Well, there's certainly going to be something for all ages and for everyone. It's this Sunday, July 27th, from 11 until 8 at St. Nicholas Picnic Grove, Route 901, Primrose in Schuylkill County. You are invited. Don't miss it and help them go well over the $700,000 mark for the money raised for this very worthy cause. Tonight's community calendar is for local Cub Scouts and their parents. The Anthracite District of Cub Scouts wants to remind you that registration for this year's week-long day camp is still going on. You can go online to the URL on your screen and print out a registration form and mail it in. Or if you're into the whole human interaction thing, you can stop by Whispering Willows Park in Cunningham tomorrow from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. to register. And while you are there, parents can talk with leaders and kids can make a craft. This year's day camp runs from August 4th to the 8th. If you would like more information, you can call the phone number on your screen. Here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. The Daily 811, the Big 40079, Quinto 91672, and Treasure Hunt 158928. Sports is next on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. The Valley Babe Ruth All-Stars run at a state championship ended last night with a 12-2 defeat in the semifinals against Mifflin County. Valley ran through the District 4 tournament, winning a number of games by way of the 10-run roll, but their dominance may have cost them. You know, building up to the state tournament, though, I just think they weren't battle-tested enough, and once we got to the state tournament, we started getting some tough games. Uh, we had a really emotional game on Friday night where it went uh, seven innings, tied 7-7, seven, seven, had to come back the next morning, finish the game before another game. And uh, we won that in the morning, and then I think, uh, I don't know if we had a letdown there, uh, but our bats just got a little flat since then. We, you know, we, lo we lost three, two, two run or one run games you know, coming into this final today. After this game against Mifflin County, our Mike Terleski told me that the Valley team was still upbeat. That's what I told them. They got to be proud. And I said, uh, you know, two years in a row, they finished top four in the state. You know, last year they finished second in the state. This year they finished fourth. Uh, you know, to the, they lost to the same team twice now. But uh, I said, there's a lot of teams that are sitting home. Not a lot of teams make the top four in the state. You know, especially two years in a row. Broomall Newtown beat Tri Township in the other semifinal game 3-2-1. So the championship between Mifflin County and Broomall Newtown started at 5 p.m. in drums this evening. Cunningham's own Russ Kanzler and his Lehigh Valley Iron Pig teammates returned home to Coca-Cola Park last night after a six-game series in Syracuse. This is Kanzler's first at-bat, and he has a gift for the guy in a blue Adidas shirt in left center field right about there. Kanzler hit this home run. He was one for four last night with a strikeout in the Iron Pig's 11-4 loss to Buffalo. The two teams play again tonight in Allentown at 7.05 p.m. The legendary golfer Happy Gilmore once said after hitting a hole-in-one at the Waterbury Open, Oh man, that was much easier than putting. I should just try to get the ball in one shot every time. Hole number two on Eagle Rock Resort's 18-hole course is a par three. It's 130 yards from the red tees, 177 from the white, 188 from the blue, and 206 from the gold. Hole number two at Eagle Rock is where Diane Colescott earned an ace. This was the second hole-in-one in her golfing career. The first one I'm sure she was thrilled about, but this time she won a luxurious golf vacation to French Lick Resort in southern Indiana. Thanks to Burger Family dealerships, French Lick has been the home of the Big Ten Championship and the Senior PGA Championship, just to name a few. Here's Cole Scott talking about her big shot. We started on hole number 17. This was hole number two, so it was our fifth uh, hole that we got to. And two of the girls had already hit. I was in a, a four-woman team. And uh, I was the third one to hit. And I ran back to grab another club and because it was windy. And I hit the perfect shot. And it came down and uh, landed right in front of the, the pin and went in. And it was exciting. The tournament Cole Scott was playing in benefited three local fire companies. The three fire companies there's two gates to Eagle Rock, and the Nuremberg uh, Fire Department is at one gate, Shepton's at the other, and Hazel Township is at the, uh, another one at the main gate. When we need help, 
They've been very good for us and they've helped us. So we did this, put this in place to help them. Cole Scott is a former women's champion at Eagle Rock. On Friday in the Hazleton Street Hockey League, the Phantoms completed a great comeback in the varsity division. The Phantoms were down two games to none in this best of five series against the Barnburners, and they fought their way all the way back to win the varsity championship. Now remember, this Saturday at the rink, it's, at, it's assist for autism. The fun begins at 9 a.m. and runs pretty much all day into the night at Beach Street in Hazleton. So stop by and support the Autism Cares Foundation. And now here's our tweet of the day. It comes from the official Twitter account of the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles training camp starts on Friday and everyone is getting ready. It won't be long, my friends. And this break won't be long either. FYI, we'll be right back. Happy Wing Night. It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, happy 25th anniversary to Nikki and Janelle Petruzzi. This which comes with love from your family and friends. Another announcement, Edgewood will be holding a dinner dance on Saturday, July 26th, featuring Greg Palmer. Enjoy a relaxing evening of dining and listening to the sounds of Frank Sinatra and many more. Many dinner options are available, and it begins at 6.30. For information, please call 570-788-1103. And finally, the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute is inviting you to a Cancer Survivor Celebration of Life. It will be held Sunday, July 27th from noon to 5 p.m. They will be having a mass at 11, and then the party starts with a pig roast and plenty of health information and classes. For info, call 570-277-6218 at tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Grace M. Tedesco of Drums. Funeral is Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the St. John Bosco Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 9.30 to 10 a.m. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Ashley Uber of Mahanoy City. Arrangements will be announced by the Louis D. Truskowski Funeral Home. Lucille A. Torilla of Freeland. Memorial is Thursday at 10 a.m. from the St. Anne's Church. Friends may call at the church from 9 to 10 a.m. The McNulty Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Bonita E. Bryford. Funeral is Thursday at 4 p.m. at the Lehman Family Funeral Service. Friends may call from 3 to 4 p.m. And Ruth A. Bryan of Hazleton. Friends may call Wednesday from 1 to 3 and 6 to 8 p.m. at the Frank J. Bonden Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Call 570-454-0111. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now in News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Blaine Evans of Cunningham. Blaine, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-459-9813 to win your free movie. Right now on SSPTV.com, you can watch a special 25-minute interview with Janine Mazurkevich and State Representative Tara Tuhill. To access that interview, scroll over to Shows and then click Special Segments. It's time for all of us at FYI to sign off. We'll see you again tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone.